Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks, and today we're going to keep looking at ClickFunnels 2.0. And in particular, we are going to look at how to set all of your background settings, whether it's colors in the background, in the foreground, images, videos, whatever it is. We're going to look at how to set that up on all of the, not only the total of the page itself, the body of the page, but also the sections, rows, columns, elements, etc. And so let's go into our settings. And the first thing we can set here is a background for the entirety of the page, the body of the page. And so when you come in, it would have been turned off. I had turned it already on. And so, of course, the first blank here says that we can do a background image. So let's put in a background image. And I got a little folder here I already made with some backgrounds in it. And let's make this one here that I had built over at, um, oh, what do they call the, the uh, site flat icon, is I had built this over there. And so it's a little bit gaudy, it's a little bit out of control, but what we can say here is where do we want this to reside? We can say do we want it to be full center, do we want it to be uh, full center parallax, and so when you scroll on the page, it will stay fixed the entire time, it'll stay fixed in the background of the page, and then you'll see it or not see it based upon the opacity of the sections and the rest of the elements that are in front of it. We can do 100% width, and we can do 100% width and height, and we can do no repeat, or repeat vertically, horizontally, however we would like. But let's go back up here to fill width of 100%. You can see here now it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom of the page. And so because of that, we got a little bit of extra room to play with. So we can start clicking on these buttons here and it can move it around. Well, right now we see it's already at the top. I clicked all the top buttons, it didn't go anywhere. But if I do the uh, middle buttons here, then it, you saw it pop down and now we can pop it all the way down to the bottom. So if you have an image that isn't going to quite cover the entirety of the area, you can use that image fit and say, okay, where do I want it position? Maybe you want it um, all the way down in the bottom right hand corner and you designed an image that would look great just down there in the bottom right hand corner because it's maybe semi-transparent and it's just going to kind of fade out across the rest of the page. That would be a good use for something like that. But in our case here, let's just go full center and it will spread it out and cover the entirety of the page. No matter what I do here, well, I guess I was wrong. It does move around. So what it did is it did what is known as, I forget now if it's a cover or if it's a contain. And so what it's doing now is I can still move it around on the page based upon, let me see here, I guess I can move it left and right, um, but not up and down. So it's just going, <coughs> excuse me, it's going left and right. And so um, I think that means it was set as cover then. I could check the CSS, but the best thing to do is just come in here and play around with the tool, put it, put it in, uh, move it into different places, 100% width and height. Now it's not gonna move at all. So just click around, you ain't gonna break anything, so just click around and see what it does when you click on different things in here. And then we can come down to our background and we can say we want a background color behind this and right now it is set to white and now it's at transparent. And now let's see what happens here is because, I didn't say this, but because this image has a transparent background, I can change the background color behind the image to anything I would like. But so now let's say we bring it down here. We got kind of that dark uh, reddish blackish almost color in the background, but you can still see all the color of the icons sticking out through it. And how could we get rid of that if we so chose is we could do that with a foreground color now. And so now we can go with a foreground color and let's say we want to make that foreground color black and then we're going to bring this up to the point where it's going to pretty much wash everything out and you're just going to get kind of a little bit of a texture in the background. 
So the way how all this works is very simple. So you have the, let me open that back up there. Didn't mean to close that. We got our background. So how this works is very simple. You got your background color, which is going to be furthest away from you. And then you're going to have your image sandwiched in the middle. And then in front of that, you're going to have your background. Now, if your image does not have a transparency on the background, if it's not a transparent PNG or maybe an SVG that has a transparent background or something, you're not going to see the background color coming through it at all. It'll be whatever static color your image happens to be. So in our case, we got a transparent background. We got that reddish color coming through. And again, if we want to kind of fade out the, um, the, the picture in total here, now I'm going to white and we can just take it down and where you can just barely see it as a texture in the background as you are building out your entirety of your page. And then of course there is one other thing we can do here. We can put in a background video as well. So let me pause for one second here. And I had to jump over to YouTube to grab a video URL because it says right here it's only YouTube and Vimeo. So let's paste that in and up pops one of my tutorial videos. And again, we got a whole bunch of settings here. Um, now, normally you're going to have something that, I mean, uh, like, I guess you could really use anything as a background uh, background video here. But what you're going to find is there's a lot of different elements. The, the sections, the rows, maybe even the columns have background videos you could put in, which I was joking with somebody one day. I was like, yeah, you know, four or five videos stacked on top of each other might be a little bit too much. And so you can go through all the settings here. We got end action. Do we want to loop the video? Or what do we want to do there? So if you've got a really short video, you may want to loop it for a while. Background style, offset video, fill 100%. Um, so I guess you got to kind of kind of mess around with that one. Then you got our background offset. So can we move that left and right? I don't know. Let me see if we can move it up and down. This will only be applied if the width of the row section is bigger than the height of, uh, okay, all right, so, and then hide video background on mobile, use color background, use color background as overlay, so let's see here, what if we do that, didn't seem to do anything, it would make sense to hide it on vid on the video on mobile for sure, um, not doing that, but I do see here though that the foreground is actually in front of it, so if we take that down, that will now go away like that. Um, so you have your video showing through. So like I said, you can actually use that video option on a whole bunch of different elements. And you got it here. And you just drop in a YouTube or Vimeo video. As of this point, I would suspect at some point you'll be able to take the videos that you're actually uploading to ClickFunnels and be able to drop that in here. But we're going to turn that off. You rarely see people using background videos anyway and it did not make it go away so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to reload the page so we're going to come back into our background we're going to turn that back on because there's one last thing i wanted to show you here is that we can set this up as a gradient now this isn't the best gradient tool in the world um, I think I use a site called uh, cssgradient.io or something like that. That's a really good site. Let me see if I can find it really quick. cssgradient.io. Let me see if that comes up. Yeah, this one is really good. I like it. Now, you do have to use a little bit of custom CSS code in order to put it in. But there's a whole thing, a bunch of things I like besides the fact you can put in as many breakpoints as you want. You can give um, opacity on each one of the elements. You can pick an infinite number of uh, angles to do this at. You can make it radial as well as linear. But if you want to stick with what ClickFunnels gives you here, you could do a gradient that's up and down, left and right, or at a diagonal as well. And if you want to add an extra color, you can just click on this in the middle, add in a new color, and let's say we want to make that red. But I did find that working with this is pretty wonky at this point. I haven't been able to figure out how to delete out a stop along the way if you wanted to. And like I said, it's a 
it's a little little funky to work with. In fact, like if I click on this here, um, how do I change the color of that one that I am now clicked on and it doesn't appear as though there's a way to, um, is there a way to be able to change that color because I'm stuck on the red one that I just put in there. Oh, and now I managed to, oh, okay. So I clicked on it and now I want to go over here to white. So now let's uh, make that actually go down to black. Okay, so now I clicked on it here and make it go to white. Okay, there you go. So you click on it and then you can change the color apparently just like that. And you can make your, um, your pretty cool looking uh, gradient on here if you want. But like I said, you got to play around with it a little bit. If it works out for you, great. If not, uh, like I say, I suggest cssgradient.io. I found to be a very good tool in the past. And so let me see. So that is our background color for our body. Let's turn that off so we don't have to stare at that. And then we can come in here to our section and we can drop in our full section right there. And of course, the very first thing we have is what we got from our style guide that we created when we first started working in the in our workspace here. And so you uh, right now I'm going to use the lightest background. I can use, let's say we're going to use my colored background. And of course, to edit and create those, you just come into your style guide and create those over here. And then, of course, we can override that at any point. And so, again, we can override that and say we want to put in a background image instead. So we got a background image in here instead of that color. And then let's say we want to put in a background color as well. And I don't know if this is going to do anything for me because I don't know if that image was transparent or not. Okay, the image apparently was not transparent. So let's take that out. Now we got the color red. As you saw just mere moments ago, we could also put in a foreground color as well. And we can make that any color or shade that we want. And so then, and also, uh, we can also, let's do this. We can also go with a gradient in here as well. And if I had a bunch of content in there, you can see it better. And the same thing, if we had the image, you can play around with all of the image styles there as well. And so then we have also the option of putting in a row if we would like. And again, the row will have all the same options. In fact, let's go back to the section here. Yes, it did have the option of a background video as well down there. And so let's go into the row, the row, same thing. We don't have the option of going to the style guide, of course, because that only sets your sections, but we have our background here as well. We can put in an image, we can change the style, we can change how it's fitting on the page. And again, we got our background and our foreground color. Both of them have gradients. I don't think I had showed you that the foreground can have a gradient as well. And then of course we can come in and we can put in some content on both sides here. And we're not going to be able to see the top because the color is going to fade out. And then let me see here. Let's just take this. Uh, well, let's do this. Let's put a paragraph element down here and go into the paragraph element. And let's increase the font size on that so it's big enough that we can actually see something. And then we can do a background color on that as well. And let's say we just want to make that a red color for that paragraph. And let me see, is there anything else that I think that might have a background on it? Uh, maybe, but um, I think at this point here, you've seen enough of how to set the background. So if you got any questions, just let me know.